What are gems? Spirits, as they say, who live and haunt a place. You cannot see them. You can just hear them or feel them all around. Hello all, although I do not claim to be an ardent book reader, I love books and I am fascinated by books of different genres. Hence it was pretty difficult for me to think of the next book that I would want to suggest. Should it be a memoir, adventure, fiction, sci-fi, fantasy? I quickly realized that that kind of an approach was impossible for me to undertake. Rather, I should take up a book that I would want to read free of any notions or baggages. And guess what I picked up? It's a travelogue. A travelogue not only through place but also through time. The place is Indraprasth slash Tughlaqabad slash Shah Jahanabad or an assimilation of all of these places into one, today known as Delhi. The book is City of Jinns by William Dalrymple. It's one of his earlier works written in the 1980s. It has two faces which are intermingled. On one hand, it describes Dalrymple and his wife's stay in Delhi in the 1980s for a period of around 11 months. And on the other hand, it's appeal through Delhi's rich and often forgotten past. In today's times, many things may have changed, but in many ways it may not. He describes his encounters with the Indian bureaucracy, for example the babus on the other side of the desk and how difficult it was to get a telephone line, to get a visa and even his luggage. Now some of these things still exist in India, if not in the cities then in the suburbs, if not in the suburbs then certainly in the villages. He goes on to describe the Delhi taxiwalas, the ways and manners, the eunuchs, the Sufis, the forgotten Anglo-Indians. All his descriptions are very very refreshing. He even encounters the last descendants of the Mughals still living in Delhi among a lot of strife, though maintaining their aura and dignity. On the other side, Dalrymple delves into the city's past and shows how the past is intertwined unconsciously into Delhi's present. He has tales to tell from the 84 riots to partition, mutiny, the Mughal era, Delhi Sultanate and even there is a chapter on the pre-Islamic history of the city. I went through a myriad of emotions while going through the book. I felt terrible reading the chapters on the riots and the partition. The book has chilling glimpses of those times. The tale of the family who hid in a hole inside their house to survive during the riots. The son who would never be seen again. The loot and the turmoil during partition are descriptions that would leave one sad and aghast. But you have also exemplary tales of survival and bravery from those times. For example, the sweet maker who pours hot jalebi mixture on incoming marauders and the railway man who runs all the way from Rawalpindi to Amritsar to escape. The feeling turns to nostalgia when you read descriptions of the old Delhi city. The tehzeeb, the lingua, the art, the culture is all but gone. Dalrymple's encounter with the Urdu calligrapher, whose art would have died with him, is a testimony to that. He also describes his tete-a-tetes with the scholarly Ahmed Ali, who refuses to visit the Delhi of present, preferring to remain in the romantic memories of the Delhi he grew up in. Delhi's past is also painted through the personalities that have shaped the history of the city. Some of them are known and some of them not so much. But in the book, through the readings, you get an insight into their thoughts and actions. Examples are there such as Latians who dislike anything Indian, but built New Delhi in all its grandeur. William Fraser, a governor general of the East India Company and a lover of Mughal arts. He dressed up like an Indian Raja, he had Indian wives, bodyguards, servants, and even liked Urdu poetry. 
Another such example is a Roshanara Begum, the second daughter of the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan. Everyone is aware of how Aurangzeb ascended the throne, but not many are aware of the plans and the machinations of Roshanara Begum and her spy network in getting him there. Through these wonderful characters from past and present, and through the tales, Delhi as a city comes to life in flesh and blood. Through its haunting past from the Tughlaq times to the richness and lavishness in the Mughal times to its current juxtaposed reality, you cannot feel but admiration for all things Delhi, from its rituals, its celebrations, its oddities and even its weather. I love Dalrymple's work. The reading is easy, languid and very endearing. It's more written in the form of a travelogue and has no pretensions of being a historical investigative narrative. If you love Delhi, you would read it. And if you don't, read it as it would help open your eyes to a world you didn't know existed. This is AB signing off. Till next time, get that coffee cup and take a sip, relax on a couch and open your mind to a world of books. Guys, do not forget to log into the Fortastic TV and look at those amazing videos from our other anchors. Please, please, please do like, subscribe and give your comments. It helps us improve.